the use case there was actually not trade finance. It was what they call nature-based assets. So it was basically something called a reef credit where they tokenized uh, an asset related to the sequestration or the removal of certain negative externalities according to the environment. And then that uh, tokenized uh, nature-based asset was made purchasable by a stable coin. So by another tokenized asset that represented basically cash. And then for all of that to happen in a very programmatic, efficient, highly secure, secure way over CCIP, our work with ANZ was actually a very good um, example of how more advanced banks that are farther along in their uh, technical adoption of blockchains can achieve large amounts of efficiencies and a lot of programmable interaction between the assets that come out of their banks and other assets. So a lot of the overhead, a lot of the management of that relationship of how the assets all interact, of how they're settled, of how they're moved, of basically how they're kept updated, all of that was successfully managed through using the Chainlink platform. And then that created very large efficiencies and allowed them to create this more advanced than nature-based asset, as they call it, uh, which was then purchased by another tokenized asset, uh, Stablecoin. Um, all of this for me is really a big part of the real world assets trend. So RWA, the real world assets trend, can really be viewed as tokenization 2.0. And it's really where the majority of the world's assets will now become tokenized, but in a very practical form. So they won't be, we won't be tokenizing ideas about general concepts. We'll be tokenizing real estate and carbon credits and insurance cash flows, and then making them accessible through stablecoin purchases, which are another type of real world asset because that's connected to real deposits.